So I got a question recently about how I decide what to sell on eBay versus what I sell on Amazon. It's a fantastic question. I definitely want to address that. I did make a whole video on that topic, but I'm going to address it again. Plus a few more, I'm going to sprinkle some, some questions and sprinkle some answers because if you want some bad advice, bad answers to some good questions, well, you've come to the right place. Well, hey there, folks, and welcome back to the Pits of YouTube. I appreciate you being here. So thankful that you're here. I'm back in Georgia. I'm headed to one of my favorite thrift stores of all time. This is the first time in like four months that I've been to this thrift store. So I am super excited to get out there. Over the past three or four months, I've gotten a few questions in the comment section of these videos that I want to address. I think there are some, some good some good questions. Stick around to the end of the video where I like to break down the day's numbers. I'm going out for, I don't know if it's going to be like a half hour or an hour, and I'm going to break down gross profits, net profits, all the way down to an hourly salary for today's thrift store finds. And hopefully it's a good one, and hopefully I'm not making $2 an hour. And here we are at Second Life, and we're headed for those front gates, and we're seeking glory. If you've been here before, you know where I'm headed. I'm headed back to the board game section. I love selling board games. It's one of my favorite things, and there's a lot of profits, and it seems to be really unpicked through. So I was distracted by a few shiny things here, but ultimately we're making our way to the board game section. After not being here for like four or five months, I actually expected to be uh, to see more board games. However, I did see this cool vintage early 90s Keys to the Kingdom. Uh, Key to the Kingdom. I love this game. I, f I forgot about this game. I haven't seen it in decades. They're asking 25 bucks, which is pretty steep. It says it's complete in the box. It is selling for about 90 on Amazon, but I'm restricted. So I checked it out on eBay and I think I can get like 70 to 75 bucks. It's not a ton of profit to spend $25 on and get maybe $25 return. It's not usually a deal I want to make. However, this game's pretty cool. So I might actually keep it for myself. Not sure. Boxers or briefs. I just found this game while I was on vacation. It's selling three bucks and it sells for about 28 on Amazon. So I can turn this $3 purchase into about 14 or 15 bucks. So that's definitely coming home with me. Then there's the magical game of Quelf. Uh, there's not too many videos where I, on my channel that I don't mention Quelf. This game's pretty beat up. So I'm just going to pick this game up for, for game parts alone. How to read a book. What if I don't know how to read a book? Then I need a book on how to read, how to read a book. Strange title. Disney, Hot Wheels. I uh, found this and this sells for like 42 bucks on Amazon, which is just crazy, but I'm restricted. So I did check it out on eBay, but it's only selling for about 15 or 20. However, the sell-through rate's awful. There's only three that have sold over the past 90 days out of 20 plus. So I left that behind. Then I got this question from Finding Gadgets 802. How do you determine what should be sold on eBay or Amazon? Again, answer to this. I have a longer video I'm going to link below, but short answer on this. I always open up the Amazon app if it has a barcode first, just to scan the the barcode which is you know the majority of the stuff that i do sell obviously has a barcode uh so I always check amazon first and and use that as like a springboard to see where i'm going to sell it if i can sell it and it has value on amazon then i will sell it on amazon and it'll show you right away if it's something that is restricted or not if it's restricted obviously then i go to ebay and sell it on ebay there are always going to be exceptions which you'll see if you if you watch these videos and I'm happy to talk about that more if there's something specific that you see in any of my videos and you're wondering why I chose to sell it on eBay even if I was able to technically sell it on Amazon that's because of uh, preference at that point and again the video where I talk about eBay versus Amazon also I go to in a little more depth of how I choose to sell on Amazon or eBay there's there's pros and cons to both they find these Pokemon cards sometimes I do blind buys of Pokemon or magic cards not this time this is 130 fake Pokemon cards. These are $15 for these tins. I know, a, I don't know a ton of Pokemon, but I know through the window that those specific cards you can see were just common worthless cards. So I left those behind. I could have in the mood to, to take a risk on those today. The Max, I love this. I forgot this even existed. It's like the whole nostalgic video from my past. It sells for about 20 bucks plus shipping on eBay. So I'm picking this up. It's only $5. What a cool little find. I didn't even know this thing actually existed. Never saw it before. Then there's a lot of media. Being that I haven't been here in like four to five months, there's going to be a lot of new selection to go through. Normally, if when I'm here like every week or so, I don't do a thorough check 
because they don't add that much, but it's been so long. So I'm really going to scour these shelves looking for, for treasures here. And I did find this Wizard of Oz, not a, a ton of money, but these DVDs are all two or three dollars and some are on sale. So I'm making another two or three dollars just by buying that. Blank VHS, I buy these as long as they're like 50 cents or less. And I lot these up. I wait until I have lots of 10, 15, or 20 of these. And even when I sell like 20 of them, I have about 10 bucks in. I usually can get uh, at least double my money. I didn't buy these ones because they were overpriced for some reason. But these three I did buy 50 cents a piece. And I'm going to lot them up with their friends in the future. Then I find these PlayStation 2 games. Not a ton of value. They're asking $3 each. First one sells a little over 20. The other two are about 15 with shipping uh, shipping on that. So I'm not making a ton of money again, but I'm uh, making money and that's what counts. Then I find uh, Barney VHS. Barney VHS, same thing with the blank VHS. I buy them when I can find them for 50 cents and I lot them up when I have 10 or 15 of them and easily double my money. So I bought this one as it was 50 cents and that's going to be lotted up as well. So next question, user a bunch of letters and numbers. So do you travel with all your inventory and items that you have listed on eBay? This question comes from uh, about a month or two ago, I made a video talking about how I travel with a traveling sales kit, so to speak, whenever I go on these road trips. And in that kit, I have a thermal printer, I, some shipping supplies, a scale, uh, tape, some just basically a smaller miniature version of everything that I have at a home office so I can sell from the road. And they were asking if I sell, uh, if I bring all my inventory, because that's a good question. On eBay, obviously, if you have hundreds or thousands of items, you can't obviously travel with that stuff. What I do is I I generally bring a small tub or two of really small items, easy to ship, that can that can fit in a small poly bag. Nothing that necessarily requires a box. So I do travel and start my road trips just so I have some sort of inventory to kind of keep the eBay algorithm going so I can list two or three items a day wherever I happen to be. So I, I start with that, but then along the road, I hit up thrift stores and garage sales and estate sales and the like and constantly add to my inventory as I go. And the cool thing is there's post offices everywhere. Uh, I also have two separate accounts, two separate eBay accounts. One is for specifically the road. I I don't always use that. Sometimes I still sell from my main account, but that's another way you can certainly do that is have two separate accounts. So you can put your main store on uh, on a vacation mode and just sell on the road with your with your second account. Thanks for the question. Then I find these metal tapes. These are actually video, but they actually have metal cassette tapes as well. Anything that is metal, pick it up. I got these for a dollar. Not as uh, quite as value as the metal cassette tapes. However, I can get roughly nine bucks a piece for these and they're only asking a dollar. So I'll lot these three up and maybe get like $25 for them. Then back to the media where I find uh, this Blu-ray Bible and it sells for about 25 bucks and they're asking five bucks for the Blu-ray. So I'll, I'll, I'll get uh, 10 bucks out of that profit. And then again, I just find a ton of brand new media today. All, all sealed stuff. I think I walked away with almost all sealed stuff. I was shocked this Bing, uh, Crosby Christmas is selling for almost 50 bucks and I got it for three bucks. So fantastic find, just like fantastic four. Same thing. This is a double feature selling for 40 bucks. I think the price is a little inflated on that because of the uh, Chris Evans in the current Wolverine and Deadpool movie. Mighty Joe Young, same thing. Sophie's Choice, again, paying three bucks each. And I'm going to make some real cash on these things. Again, brand new, sealed. I find a ton of great finds. Say this one was one of the used ones that has value today. Def Leppard. Uh, I thought this might be foreign and not play in the US, but it does say region, open region, so it'll play on any any DVD player. So I picked this up for three bucks and it sells for about 25. So that's going on. Question is from Ralph Delbert, 8820. You may have already answered the question, but do you check your board games to see if they're complete? Because that always worries me. Slash new subscriber. Thank you, new subscriber, Ralph. That's a good question. I talk a lot about used board games. I think uh, board games, specifically used ones, are often overlooked. Do I check board games? I will say uh, it used to be, especially when I was new with with selling used board games, I would always check inside the thrift store to make sure all the pieces were complete. Nowadays, I don't do it as often, and I probably should. Um, there's a lot of exceptions to, to what I do. If I'm spending 2 to $3 on a board game, and the board game, say, is worth 25 to $35 or, or, or somewhere north of 25 bucks, I should say, to me, the risk of the $2 is worth it for me just to blind buy it and hope all the pieces 
are there. Um, but certainly it, it is something that I think people should practice. And especially the more that you sell board games, the more you can kind of just open the box and kind of eyeball to see if all the pieces look complete on the occasion that they're not complete, especially if the game is worth 25, 30, 35, $50 or more. Even if it is missing, say, one single piece you find out when you get home, you, generally you can go on eBay and find replacement parts for pretty cheap. Uh, sometimes it's a, it's a little bit pricier, but worst case scenario, say you buy a game for two bucks and it's uh, missing uh, uh, multiple pieces, definitely check eBay because you can then part out your own game and sell game pieces on eBay. And that's something that I actually know resellers do that buy incomplete board games or board games that uh, they know can just sell game pieces individually on eBay. It's not the, I don't have the patience for something like that, but that's a whole nother business when it comes to to used board games. This is a long answer and there's a, a lot more I could, could talk about on it. But generally, yes, I do think it's a good idea to check the board game pieces to make sure they're all there. If you're at a garage sale and you're spending a buck and the game is incomplete, you only you really only risk a buck. So that's up to you to decide if that's a, if that's a, a risk uh, you're willing to take or not. Then there's also this other tip that I do recommend where, especially games, I talk about Quelf. I've sold hundreds of Quelfs at this point. So I just pick up Quelfs regardless uh, if it's going to be complete or not because I find them so many at times out in the wild. So even when one is incomplete, when I'm buying a Quelf game for 2 to $3, uh, if, over the course of, say, a month, if I have 5 to 10 Quelf games, even if some are missing pieces, between all of them, I can combine all of them and make, say, eight complete Quelfs. And that's going to be make up for any of the money that I, that I have certainly spent, even if I can't sell two Quelf games because they're incomplete. But then the next month, I'll find eight more Quelfs and be able to continually... Uh, complete games that are incomplete. Not a huge fan of the sound of music. I much prefer the sound of cash in my pocket, even though it's kind of quiet. It just kind of sounds like a shush, like a shush, shush, shush when I touch it in my pocket. Anyway, Star Trek, uh, another brand new DVD. Both of these movies are making me some, some cash to go shush, shush in my pocket. Then I find this other board game in the other section, the kids section, and I've sold this game plenty. Three bucks. Um, I did check. It sells, I would double my money. However, the, the box was really beat up, so I left this behind. I probably could have made like – turned my three bucks into four bucks or so, but not worth it when the box is really beat up. That's not acceptable for, for Amazon or eBay really. So I paid seventy eight eighty one total. Let's go over some numbers. So let's take a gander at today's estimated number, shall we? Gross sales are going to be about 425 bucks. Invested about $79. Dollars selling fees ninety eight bucks that includes eBay's and Amazon's cut of the deal. Shipping fees forty nine bucks. That might seem a little bit low to those who are accustomed to selling strictly on eBay. However, a lot of these DVDs and one of the board games is actually going to the Amazon FBA warehouse, and shipping is extremely cheap. So we're talking about twenty five to fifty cents per DVD. So that's why a lot of the shipping fees are going to be pretty low on a lot of this stuff. Supplies are going to be about three bucks. I don't pay a lot for sh uh, shipping supplies because I I scavenge the uh, the uh, the recycling bins and such for free cardboard and shipping supplies. So three bucks is actually might be a little bit high, but we're going with three bucks. Net profits, that's going to leave us with about 196 bucks for the day. I do set aside 15% of those net profits uh, every every time I have these kind of estimates. So that's about 29 bucks. And that's definitely not tax advice. I'm not a tax pro. That's just what I do. Travel, that's going to be about 45 minutes there around trip and back. Shopping, we're about 25, 25 minutes in the store. Listening, it's not going to take very long at all. 30, 30 minutes might actually be a lot for this stuff. Packing, same thing, uh, 30 minutes. That might be uh, a larger estimate than it's going to take. Shipping, it'll be about 15 minutes. So we're looking at about two hours and 30 minutes, leaving us with an hourly rate of roughly $196 divided by the two and a half hours. That's going to leave us at 78 bucks an hour. Or if you want to take out those taxes and call it 167 divided by that two and a half hours, that's going to look at about $67 an hour. So that's a pretty good deal. I'll take that every time. And thanks for watching, guys, and can't wait to see you Hope to catch you out in the wilds.